So it seems like YouTube is now live and it is better quality. It's not not uh, freezing or anything like that. So it has to do with Facebook Live for some reason. Or even my memory, I don't know. But anyways, we'll, I'll figure that out as time goes on. Hope you guys can hear me. There's one viewer on here, so please type in the box if you can see me or hear me. would really appreciate that. No, it seems like it's freezing because I, I opened a new window here. Man, it's really choppy. Really choppy. And hope you can hear me. Please uh, post something. But anyways, I'm back, and it seems like it's working. So just post something to. Seems like it's working fine now. Okay. So that's Facebook Live for you. Doesn't work that well on certain devices or certain browsers. But otherwise, um, that's about it. So if you have any questions or anything, post them. I'm live video, can you go away? <laughs> So otherwise, um, yeah. Who else is on here? Anybody else on here? Nobody yet. So I'll just wait until people come on, give me questions about my stay in Belize or what happened to me or any further things you want to know or talk about since my time in Belize for eight months and on the videos that I that I posted. That's uh what can I say? What can I say? Any questions, anyone? Hope the video is good. I'm here now in Canada, so just like a few hours east of Toronto, but uh, yeah, I'm in a community center. I'm using internet here. Otherwise, got this new computer and that I'm using. And I'm going to be upgrading the RAM on it. But otherwise, I had a fun time in Belize. I can't say I didn't. But there was also a time that wasn't so fun when I was in prison and it was really bad. It was a tough time, but and that was for three months, but I learned a lot. I gained a lot of experience. And I think 
the only thing that I can say is you don't know until you've gone to prison. You've gone to jail. You can't you can't uh, can't fathom what what it's like to be in there until you've experienced it. It is terrible on each country has their own set of rules and regulations and their own um, their own way of their own way of doing things and so that's the thing is that Belize is it's pretty bad pretty bad but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be I thought it would be way worse, and it wasn't. I was even surrounded by some killers and rapists, and they did nothing to me. You know, like they respected me, I guess, because I'm not like them. There was a lot of, um, there wasn't a lot of Caucasian people. There was a lot of black people and Hispanic people, and there, there just wasn't a lot of Caucasian people. There was, there was very few at that, and I had, I had an experience. It was an experience in my life, you know. And I, a, I don't want to, and I don't think anyone wants to end up in a, in a place like that. But Belize, overall, minus minus the politics and the government, it's a wonderful place. It's a beautiful place. Now, I'm not saying every city is perfect and every city is beautiful because I think Belize city is definitely not a place that a nature lover would want to be in because it's definitely definitely not a place where there's a lot of nature. It definitely looks like a third world country when you hit Belize city. But when you go to other cities and other small villages, you'll see the beauty all around you because there's a lot of forests and a lot of jungle around. And that's the thing. It's just it's just nature, scenery, just incredible. Wildlife. You have animals just walking all around you. It's, it's beauty. And I have a lot of a lot of it, photographs that I've taken that I posted to Facebook, so you can check that out. And there are a lot of videos that I've posted as well, but a lot that I haven't posted, and unfortunately, because everything was stolen, or a majority of things were stolen, I'm not able to you know, retrieve those, unfortunately. And I lost a lot of things, and I think what that tells me something that teaches me some kind of lesson. I don't know what it is yet, but some kind of lesson it taught me. And I know it did open a lot more doors than than now. Of course, there was only one door open when, or two doors open when we were at the farm. And now there's many, many doors that are open. Dozens of doors, and I, I can choose any path I want in life. And of course, that path is still continuing to spread the vegan message, continuing to to um, you know write my books and so forth. So, no matter what, I'm still here, being a voice for God or for universe, or Jesus or whoever you want to call that being or that uh, energy so if anyone has any questions we don't have many viewers on because I switched to YouTube and I don't know really know how it works if it notifies the subscribers or what does it do I'm not sure but I did post it I am going to post it right now to Facebook And going to get people to come on the line so we can 
have some questions. Okay, so I just po I just posted to Facebook. So we should be getting more people coming on. So we'll just wait for a little bit. If there's anything you want to ask me or anything you'd like to know about my stay in Belize, it's all about Belize, about my stay, what happened to the farm, uh, what happened in, in prison, what happened... Uh, what's happening now? What's my future plans? What about my books? All these things. So if you have anything, let me know. If uh, the video is choppy or you can't hear me or anything like that, let me know. But it seems like it's going, it's going well. So YouTube Live is a way better system. Um, I think you, I think Facebook Live is just an experiment. It's not really fully. Um, like available on every, on every every um, system because it's not available on Facebook Lite app for Android, and it's not available for many many different things. So many different like apps or, or, or browsers or things like that or devices. So I got this uh, computer recently. It's an Acer Spin One. It's pretty small, it's like 12 inch. Laptop. It's just a decent laptop. What I what I needed, but the RAM I'm gonna have to update. It's only four gig. I'm gonna have to update to eight gig. But otherwise, it's going it's going well. Like I'm getting my life back on track. Definitely not tackle any anything with the governments. If you tackle any, if you try to challenge the governments, they squish you. If you know the laws, if you know the human laws, if you know a lot about the laws they're gonna squish you they're gonna squish you and if you challenge the court systems they don't like that they don't like you challenging the courts so that's one thing they don't like you challenging them and it's not uh, it's not there's no benefit to challenging the government the whole idea is really to, to spread a passionate and loving message and we're not here to like destroy anybody we're just here to create a, a new community based on love and sharing and caring for one another and not something that is based on trying to change other people trying to change a system we're not here to change a system we're here to create a new system a new community of love and sharing that's my mission on this earth and I've learned a lot since going to Belize especially from a friend Brian my friend Brian he taught me a lot and I'm so thankful for him for teaching me a lot and we're very 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 much alike Brian and I and we got along very well it's he too doesn't like the whole system. He doesn't like the whole society. He doesn't. He just wants to live out in nature, just like me. Growing as much food as we possibly can, veganically. And just being in nature. And being around people that 
have similar values. And so these values are really in the best interest of, of, of us, best interest of us. So if anyone has any questions whatsoever, let me know. I'm going to be on here for just a little longer so people can come on and didn't, didn't for some reason didn't work on Facebook Live but Facebook Live did not work but uh, hopefully this YouTube does work and the video seems to be pretty good quality yeah pretty good quality uh, let's see we can invite someone to the call so I'm gonna invite someone. <laughs> yeah, so I invited my friend Brian. So let's see if he uh, accepts it or not. I don't know, but we'll see. Hello, hello, we've got a viewer, <laughs> finally. Anyone has any questions? We post.
How's everybody doing today? How's life treating you? People can't seem to be, can't seem to connect for some reason, but uh, this YouTube seems to be better connection. Let me know if you can hear me, okay? This video is better than...
So hopefully we're going to get more viewers on. Just going to wait a few more minutes. It's at around 11.30 anyway, so I didn't get on until like a little later than that due to glitches and technical difficulties. But thank you for joining joining us here today. Hopefully we're going to get uh, more people coming on. So just be patient until more people come on. But if you have any questions about my time in Belize, uh, ask away. If there's any glitches or anything, let me know with the video. So one thing I like to mention is the immigration laws of police is really poor. They only give you a month, and then you have to you have to renew the visa. Fortunately for Canada and for U.S. citizens, you have only a month, and then you have to restamp your your books. And you can do that uh, multiple places around Belize, but. It's awful. I mean, if you're there late, like even a few hours or even a few days, you will be thrown into prison. So it's a real, real drag. And it's a drag how we feel we're free. But we, instead, we got to pay the government all this money just to be on land that's we're supposed to be, supposed to rightly be free. I mean, we have imaginary country borders. We have imaginary lines on the map. And if we cross that imaginary line, cross that imaginary border, hey, we need to show, uh, show them our passports. We need to pay money in order to go across all these things. And it's unfortunate that we don't live in a world that's free. Totally free, but that's the world we live in. We got to make the best of it and stay far away as possible from prisons and governments and, and police officers, etc. So, about it i'm going to end this in about 10 minutes if no one comes on and i will continue to try try to see how to get facebook live to work properly but i don't know what it what's going on with it i've always had problems with facebook live never had <laughs> good connections but youtube youtube live on air or whatever you call it it's it's, it's I think they call it Google Hangouts on air, but it's pretty good. Like the connection is good. Everything is good, but Facebook Live, you know, but you get a lot more 
lot more viewers for sure. For some reason, it doesn't, doesn't connect. It's very choppy, doesn't work. But YouTube Live, thumbs up for Google. Uh, Hangouts on air. Thank you for that. The only problem is it doesn't connect to Facebook. So your Facebook followers or friends won't know about it unless they're subscribers. And even subscribers don't really know. I mean, they have to log into their email to know that if you're on or not. And if they're on the internet and they're not checking their email or they're not on YouTube, they don't know if you're on or not. So that's the problem. But uh, one day I'll figure this whole thing out. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just, I'll just get rid of all my possessions. Live out of nature. That's my my end goal <laughs> is to live in the Garden of Eden, live in a utopia society. We don't yet, but that's my aim. That's my goal. And uh, of course, continue spreading a message of love and compassion to the world, and to get people to understand that. That's the only way that we're going to live in a just and peaceful world is if we ourselves live in that, in that way. So we need to live that way when it comes to our food. So with our food is the most important for any culture to understand, understand uh, their rituals and their, and their and the problems that they face, they need to look at their food. Anthropologists say that, and that's what we need to do. We need to look at our food because our food choices basically results in the outcomes of what's happening in the world. And so if we're violent, being violent with our food choices, eating animals and animal secretions, we'll start to see that our world, we will also have you know, we face a lot of a lot of issues and a lot of problems, which is ultimately ultimately has to do with our food. And I'm not talking just about the chemicals. I'm not talking just about the GMOs. And I'm not talking about how it's planted and if it's grown locally and all these things. Yes, these things are very important. But the most important thing is: are we being fed foods that Contribute to the violence. Are we eating dead foods? Are we eating animal foods? Are we eating not just not just flesh of animals, meat? Are we eating secretions of animals like eggs and dairy and honey and so forth? And if we are, we're contributing to that to that violence. So whatever we see out there, we're doing within ourselves all this. So hopefully you can hear me. We got some more viewers on the on the vent. So thank you for joining me. If you have any questions about my time in Belize, anything, just ask about the future. This is an egotistical video, all about me. <laughs> so anything you want to know about what I'm doing to promote the vegan message now? Any questions about veganism? Any questions about activism or education? Any questions about anything? You know, ask, ask away. Because we're all here to learn. We're all here to share our ideas and our knowledge. And let's try to make this world a peaceful and better place to live. So thank you for joining. I hope you can see me and hear me. And uh, please do stay online because the more people we have, People are seeming seeming to join us now. Seem to join us more and more people. So
Any anything you want to mention? Let me know. I'm still here. There are a few viewers on. Thank you for joining. All I can say about uh, Belize is Belize is such a beautiful country. I mean, there's a lot of countries out there that are just so beautiful when it comes to nature, when it comes to the animals that live in nature. And but it's a perfect place because it's not much going on when it comes to I mean just living there overall living living conditions in Belize very very nice I don't I don't think it's a third world country I think it's more developed than you know in some of the other cent you know some of the other Central and uh, South American countries I think it's good there because of the fact that land is cheap in fact I don't understand why we have to buy land why would the people all these things when this is supposed to be free we're supposed to be guardians of this earth and we're supposed to be taking care of the earth but otherwise um, that land was really 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 great but I felt I don't know isolated I felt like trapped I felt like there was no doors open no opportunities and now I have a lot more opportunities a lot more like places to go to and things to do and it was kind of isolated there in the middle of nowhere which I like of course and it's great but that land that place was just not not 100 percent I don't think there is going to be a place that's 100 percent perfect nowhere is and um, do you have any questions let me know Anything, anything, anyone post something. Yeah. So far we have three viewers. Thank you for being with me. Again, this is a video all about myself. Man, don't I just love talking about myself. <laughs> Man. My ego is taking over. No, it's all about the animals. It's all about the animals. It's all about the earth. It's all about living in harmony with all life. This is what it's all about. It's not about me. Not at all. It's about living in harmony with all life. It's about just sharing with one another and caring for one another. If someone gets hurt. We help them as much as we can. And over the years, I've gotten to be more tuned with nature. I've gotten to be less uh, materialistic, less of a consumer. I just buy things I absolutely need to spread this message to the world. So I got this cheap uh, computer and this mouse right here and I still using my old phone so that's what I'm doing I am continue writing my books right now I lost a lot of data a lot of information as the police and police stole a lot of stuff from us that's unfortunate they stole a lot from me they stole my laptop they stole everything and I'm trying to recuperate and trying to salvage whatever I can so it is uh it is hard it's hard when something like this hits you like it really hits you hard though of course it's a big learning experience but it's also also losing a lot but i i understand that things like this need to happen they just need to happen there's always a reason for everything there's always a reason for every good or bad choice you make in life and I didn't know it was a bad choice I mean we all think that we're doing the right thing we all think that we are living the way we want to live or we're taking the path we want to take and it's just how it is in life we don't know we just use our intuition we learn from others sometimes we take their their advice sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't but uh, you know, there are 
many people out there that have fallen like dozens and dozens of times before they finally made it, finally you know, achieved something substantial in their life. And it's not until we realize, like, what is that that we really want to do? What is my mission? And strive for that. And even if we fall down hundreds or thousands of times, we get up. Because that is, thank you for joining us. We had like five viewers on the call, or on the video. Thank you for joining me. So I was just talking basically about um, how we fall down time and time again. If we are, or we feel that we're drowning in a river, that there is still the path on the other side of the river. And so that we need to understand that there's always going to be these rivers. There's always going to be some obstacles in our, in our path, in our journey along the way. And so we need to understand that and we need to anticipate those and uh, do a lot of praying, do a lot of meditation. I've learned a lot. I've read uh, a lot of the Bible. Now, some people may think that the Bible is is a fairy tale. Many people think the Bible is truth. There are many people that couldn't care less what it says in the Bible. But I've read a lot of the Bible, and there is a lot of truth in there. Then again, there's a lot of fairy tales. And we don't really know what happened because men wrote that book. And so I always tell people that, no, I'm not a religious person, but love is my religion. That's right. Love is my religion. So what else happened in Belize? Do you want to know? What happened? When I was in Belize, not much. I mean, we were farming, so we were strictly farming plants. There was no animals. There was only the wild animals that roam around. And there was a lot of a lot of um, fruits that we were growing, a lot of herbs. A lot of vegetables, more and more fruits. So we had a lot of coconuts. We planted over 100 coconuts. Trees, we planted um, a lot of bananas. We, uh, someone posted, Ziggy posted, how would OE pack to travel to Belize? Um, I would say travel as light as possible <laughs> wherever you go because if you want to walk around the city or you want to do any kind of hiking or anything sometimes you need to carry your bag and if you have too much stuff i've tried it if you have too much stuff it's hard hard to get around it's going to be very heavy so travel light as light as possible uh belize is nice but again for Canadians and, and Americans, I don't know about other countries, but for Canadians, Americans, you have to stamp your passport every month uh, for visa. Otherwise, because in Belize, they, in Belize, the officers they check you, they randomly check people on the street. So that's the thing; they randomly check you. So don't forget, Ziggy, that you need to stamp every month if you want to be there more than a month. But land is cheap. That is very, very cheap. There. It's like one of the cheapest in Central and South America, from what I, I've heard. And uh, land is pretty cheap. Land is cheaper, actually, in Guatemala. But Guatemala is supposed to be a worse country for drugs, violence, and things like that. Uh, though, of course, I try to be as positive as possible. So, that's about it when it comes to Belize. I don't know. Any other, any other questions? Hope I answered it, Ziggy.
What else? Um, okay, so we were basically um, farming plants. We had, uh, you welcome, Ziggy. We we're farming plants. We were ready to create a community. We had, like, interested, like, a few people interested in joining the farm and the community. It didn't work out because of uh, immigration issues, unfortunately. And uh, some other legal issues that we had, which is it's crazy because we never harmed anybody. We never harmed any living soul, human or non-human, and and they 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 arrested us like we're like we're big time you know killers and, and rapists. <laughs> so which was funny. Uh, what did you learn in Belize, particularly practically and physiologically? Um, uh, well. I could, I could definitely say that uh, practically we learned a lot and spiritually we learned a lot. So first comes the practic practicality, which is basically farming and learning to farm. And we learned to farm basically through intuition, also through uh, trial and error, and as well as learning through YouTube and so forth. And of course, through other Belizeans that live there, how they farm and how they grow their food. So there's a lot of Mennonites that live there, like close to us. And we had a lot of uh, friends uh, in the living in the village that have helped us and uh, taught us about farming and gardening. And it was a great, great thing. And I think the one thing that we need to understand is to use our intuition and, and trial and error. Those are the best ways. And of course, if you know people, that uh, farm and garden to learn from experience from them. But a lot of people say different things. Some people say they don't they don't um, practice the the growing with the moon cycles. And some people do. And some people take that very seriously. And some people couldn't care less. Like the Mennonites, they just plant and grow whenever. Of course, there are certain times that certain certain produce you you know. Like there is a season for certain produce, so that's that's the thing. There, there's always a timing for watermelons. There's always timing for this and that. So the second thing is the spiritual aspect, or uh, philosophical aspect of of it, which is basically just tuning into our own our own inner 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 voice our own inner wisdom and our intuition and when we meditate especially when we're meditating in nature we understand that connect to that we connect uh meditating not only with our eyes closed but meditating be mindful when we're walking for example out in nature and just connecting to the animals and really really deeply connecting to the earth and the animals and to all, all the surroundings. So really, spiritually, I think it's individually, everyone has their own kind of interpretation or their own experiences. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. What are some of the do's and don'ts of farming? Well, the first no-no <laughs> is, is farming with any animal inputs. We don't farm with any animal inputs at all. We farm veganically, or we were farming veganically, which means that you use uh, compost and you use humanure and you use urine. So humanure would be human manure and urine from, of course, from us. So that's that's the thing. So that means that we would put all our scraps into a big, a big, uh, like a compost pile uh, away from the main area of the house and we would uh, every so often like we would have this bucket and every so often we just put our scraps our food scraps there and then we would um once in a while we didn't do it when we were when we were there but we wanted to create some 
some uh, compost compostable toilets, which is very easy to make. You can make your own compostable toilets just from out of out of wood. So basically, just uh, one flat piece of wood, uh, then then some legs for the for the sides, and you put a bucket right underneath, and you make a hole on top. So that's basically it. And so that it doesn't smell, put sawdust on the excrement when you when you finish each time. So you put like one or two scoops of sawdust. And you can mix that in with a little soil if you want. And then once that is completed, you put that into the compost and you mix that all into the compost. And the compost takes at least six months to a year. Once it's fully decomposed, uh, it will turn black. So it will be fully black. And you just use that and put that on the, on the, on the plants. So another thing is to use urine your own urine and urine within like a few days for example we used to pee in a bottle a big big enough big enough uh, bottle I don't know a couple of liters bottle and you would just put it on the plant whatever plants needed it. dying plants usually and the ones that were smaller the starting the start so we would basically have a little area for starting our plants once they got to a to a decent size, we would uh, dig them up and then we would replant them. And we would replant them uh, in various different ways. We wouldn't replant them like one section watermelon, one section this, one section that. We would basically intersperse. Like we would, yeah, yeah, exactly. Fa fascinating human manure, I believe, is one of the primary functions of the body. Well, of course, when you eat, I mean, you defecate after, right? So, uh, have you ever practiced urine therapy? I was told about it. I've learned, I've learned some somewhat about it. I've um, listened to other people who have done it, and they say it's magic. I mean, they not only do they drink it, they actually wash it as well. I'm not a hundred percent sure if 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 this is truth or not, or if this is a good idea or not. Um, I mean, people, there's so many varying opinions on, out there. And um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure at all uh, if, if it's good or not. I mean, I tried it once and I didn't like it at all. And that was the only one time I, I did it. Um, I used it for my hair. I never seen a difference, but then that was only one that one time. So I may, in the future, I may try it again for a longer period. I don't know. But at the moment, uh, I'm, I'm just not at that level yet uh, where, where I'm doing it. But um, I think it also depends on what kind of food you're eating. Because if you're eating, especially if you're eating animal foods, and then you're eating, you're eating like processed foods and high-fat foods and who knows what else, chemically laden food and stuff. I think then the, the urine and the, and the humanure, I think that's going to be the part where you're not, you don't want to like, just want to like throw it out. You know, you don't want to use it on your plant because if you have been eating GMO foods and you're eating animal foods, why would you want to put that back on the, on the plants, you know? Uh, so let me talk a little bit about the farming, I guess. Um, but basically, basically there, there, are, there are many methods on how to farm. And I think the best way or the best method would be, yes, there, there's, yes, permaculture is a good way. But there's so many different techniques in permaculture. And some people, there's so many methods, that's all I can say. And permaculture is a huge topic that I can go on forever and ever. But basically, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, probably Jermaine is on here. Thank you, Ziggy. Nice to be vegan. Nice that you're in Toronto. Uh, hopefully you can Facebook me. If you're not already a friend, Facebook me. But otherwise, uh, there's so many like techniques and different ways to garden and to farm. And the one way definitely is veganically. That's the number one thing. You actually yield more plants, you yield more food 
when you're farming veganically, meaning no animal manure, no blood meal, no bone meal, no feather meal, no whatever. Just strictly composting human manure, human manure, and our own urine as well. So I think the best way to farm, which we didn't we didn't use this method when we were when we were in Belize because the land was already there, all the plants were already there. But if you have a new a new land that you're farming on or you're creating some kind of bed for your plants, basically what you want to do is you want to dig down as much as you can, uh, about three or four inches down, take all that soil out, and you want to mix in two things, actually three things you want to mix in. Um, hopefully you already have a compost ready, otherwise if you don't, then it's going to kind of be harder to, to start, because what you want is you want to have a foundation, which is, which is wood chips, uh, leaves, twigs, uh, and compost. So you want you need a lot of compost, whatever amount of compost you need for for the um, for the bed or for the garden that you're creating that you're creating. So you take about three four inches, you mix all the all the compost, you mix all the all the uh, twigs and the and the wood chips and all these all these things. You mix it with all the dead leaves as well. You mix it all up. You wait, of course, about a year until it's um, until it's really like de de decomposed. And then you just fill up for three or four inches. And that's basically it. And you, when you plant, you're getting all the nutrients from the compost. You're getting all the nutrients from the, from the humidor, from the urine, all that stuff. And you put it throughout the whole ground and uh, just, just plant, just put the seeds in or put the plants in, and that's it. It's pretty simple. It's not rocket science. And once, once um, that takes place, and once you start farming, it's like it's not rocket science. It's pretty easy. Pretty easy. So you want to start the small plants indoors under a uh, grow light, unless you are living in the tropics or somewhere. You. Um, start them in a shady area okay you start them in a shady area and then you basically uh basically replant them when they're tall enough so something like i don't know how many inches that would be maybe foot a foot off or maybe two feet and then uh, replant them so you'll still know when the plant is is ready when the plant is um, strong it needs to be strong enough and then you put it in the direct sun eventually. But then again, sometimes you don't put it in the direct sun. It depends on, on the on the plant as well. So all depends. Anything else? I mean I think my mouse is broke. My mouse is dead. I need new batteries. But um, anything else? Playing a good song here, actually. That's another thing. When you live more in nature, you kind of drift away from the society. We kind of drift away from listening to music. We kind of drift away from using a lot of electronics. I mean, I, I didn't use much much internet at all actually for the first few months I think it was for like the first month or two I didn't have any internet at all so are you going back to Belize or is there a certain place you would like to travel to well I would like to eventually live um, in the tropics you know and uh, that's my dream is really to live there permanently somewhere but there are legal laws and there are visa issues that uh, you have to comply with and I, I don't like to comply I'm a non-conformist and unfortunately in order for me not to end up in prison again is to 
Hello, hello, and Anushka. Anushka. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but hello, hello, hello. So I don't know if I'm going to be going back to Belize because Belize, the laws are, when it comes to visas, the laws are a little, I don't know. Um, not that friendly for sure, not especially for Belize, uh, for vegans, I mean. So I'm not sure about Belize, but uh, hopefully, hopefully one day in the tropics, a bunch of friends of mine and farming, gardening, uh, feeding the world. That's basically what I want to do: is uh, farm enough food to feed people that you know can't afford food, and also teach people how to grow food. Because there are a lot of people in Belize that have land and they don't grow anything. They 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 put flowers, for example. It's like it's like, come on, you're eating chicken and rice and beans all day, every single day, and they're not growing their own food. Like, come on, what's going on here? I mean, we have the potential to grow uh, as much food as you possibly can to be self-sustainable and people are just not doing that they're i don't know what they are they're either lazy or i mean the whole the whole problem is we ask a lot of people actually why they're not growing their own food why they're not they're not farming and they said they're just lazy they don't want to wait like six years or eight years for some trees to mature and to grow and, and all that so this is it they don't want to but um Fortunately, we got to get out of our comfort zone. We got to stop being lazy and get to the point where that we are actually farming only plants, no animals here. So no like bees for honey, or no no. Um, hi Anushka. Um, yeah. So basically, this channel is all about all about trying to spread a message of love and compassion, which is basically a vegan lifestyle, vegan diet, or whatever you want to call it. It's veganism, and uh, it's basically being compassionate towards all life. And that's what this channel is all about. And uh, today it's actually a video, and I'm not going to go on too much longer, but basically this video is exactly self-sustainability uh, is, is the key. So basically this channel is all about trying to create... A utopia society so we can live um, peacefully with one another and uh, in nature and, and so forth but this video particularly this video is about my stay in Belize and my time in Belize and, and about the videos the last videos that I posted so if you want you can check out some videos of mine in the in the uh, channel check out a few of them see what you like there's so many different videos from meditation to veganism, to religion, to you name it, to gardening, to farming, to everything. So in the past few months, I've been, I would haven't been regularly posting, but um, yeah, the key is to be as self-sustainable as we possibly can. So with our electricity, with our um, food, with our land and everything, so with our water, everything and. If we are not, for example, then we share with one another. Give someone limes or lemons or oranges. Say we have a lot of it. Because that's what I was doing, basically. I was sharing and trading with the Mennonites. And that's basically basically what we're doing. We didn't have much food growing or much food bearing, I should say, at the time. And so we shared with the Mennonites. And uh, they provide, from what I was told, they provide majority of the food in Belize. So they're very, very uh, great people to get along with. i tell you one story, actually. Um, Mennonites are kind of like Amish people, but they're, they're a little bit different. Basically, they don't, they don't believe, the majority of them, they don't believe on using electricity. Now, there are some Mennonites that use electricity and internet and all kinds of stuff. But majority of them, and the traditional ones, they don't use any electricity. And the basic reason they do that is just because they just want to live uh, the way they, that humans used to live, you know, back in the days. And so we went to see them uh, about every week, and we shared and we traded traded food with them. And at the same time, uh, these people were like so welcoming and so warm and so like kind 
they were giving us like all of all their all the food you know like whatever food that they didn't sell they would give us all the seconds you know it was food that was still very edible still very good condition but they just couldn't sell and so they did uh farm commercially so they had animals on the land they had chickens and they had oxen and they had horses on the land and they used that, that for their power they used that for transportation they used that for food or I should say they use them for food because they're not they're not an it's they're not a that's they're they're living beings and they're just really really kind warm people especially the two that I've known over there we we're really good friends Mary and, and um, my goodness what was his name now but anyways um, very good friends and so the, that, that was the thing, like towards humans, Mennonites are so wonderful, so kind and so caring, such caring people. But towards animals, non-human animals, wow, they're different. And one story that I want to mention is that I remember I was working with them because we work... Um, we work for them uh, in exchange for food. They don't, they don't just give us free food in exchange because we don't really give them much food. We give them like a little bag of oranges or a little bag of limes, whatever we have. Uh, again, we didn't have much much uh, produce growing on the, on the land. So unfortunately, we didn't have um, much produce or much fruits and vegetables bearing, but we did have. We did plan a lot. We did plan a lot. So there was one uh, incident there where uh, they were they had two oxen carrying this huge uh, logs of wood for them to cut because they cut wood. They have this um, sawmill and machine that's run by um, run by uh, horses, um, not horses. Sorry, oxen run by oxen, and basically oxen are used as power. So oxen are used as power and they were they were hauling these these huge huge logs like these two or three big logs and it was like these two oxen were trying to pull and I think one of them was a youngster like a baby maybe and the Mennonites were whipping the oxen to get them to move and I felt like I, I looked into the oxen's eyes and I felt so much sadness and uh, for them and um, and hurt for them because of the fact that I mean they had these huge I don't know these huge like restraining things on their necks and they couldn't hardly ever they couldn't hardly ever move their necks back and forth they had to like look straight all the time and the Mennonites just kept beating them with a stick and kicking them and everything. And I just felt like, what am I going to do? I mean, what are we going to say to them? And there was just nothing that we could say or do that would like get them to awaken to compassion, to love. And um, I don't understand how they can be like, really kind and, and and loving people towards human, but then towards non-human animals. I don't know. It's, it's, it's sad. It's sad. But um, that was a really like a big experience. Because I've experienced, I've, I've bear witness, I've experienced like animal abuse directly. Um, not slaughter per se, but like abuse towards animals. And I, I mean, I've even done it myself directly, so question that Ziggy has is what is better organic cooked foods or GMO raw foods and I'm not going to say one is better than the other or or compare these things just eat whatever your budget can afford <laughs> you know if you can afford and if you can if it's feasible for you to like grow your own food and to move to the tropics I would say do that you know if it's not or if you don't want to move to the tropics you just want to stay in a cold climate or wherever you're living, that's fine. 
just do whatever your budget uh, your budget uh, calls for. I, I, I never like compare things. Uh, GMO foods or, or organic cooked foods. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I prefer eating all raw foods. And the more you go veganically, the more you're eating veganically. I'm not talking about organically. I'm talking about veganically with no animal inputs, the better uh, off will be. But of course, for people that are living in the cities, they're living more north, it's not possible. Maybe sometimes in the summertime, you might have a few months where you're growing some food. But um, what I suggest you do for anybody who has the time and the money is to, again, go, so, go somewhere subtropical or tropical area, grow your, all, your own food all year round, veganically. It's very simple. You just, just look for, I mean, it's simple to grow your own food. Just replicate exactly what what's done in nature. You don't add in any animal inputs like manure or blood mill or feather mill or whatever. Um, and you just just farm like like in nature. Like you're not going to replicate it exactly 100% because of the fact that um, in nature there's no like there's no like big papayas being grown. There's no like like everything what is being grown nowadays is GMO, everything. I mean, even the bananas we had on our land that was already growing there, they're all, most of them are GMOs because they don't have seeds. They just, they're GMOs. But we're not adding in addition additional chemicals and we're not adding in any additional animal inputs, things like that. So organically is the best way to go, uh, raw, organically. So eating as much food as you possibly can, that's the key, eating as much food as possible. Now people are going to say otherwise, they're going to argue or whatever it is, but um, it's just how it is. So any other questions before we go? Because uh, I need to get going right away. Yeah, I think the key is to, the key is to, um, move somewhere warmer, uh, find a place or find a community you can join and and learn from them, learn from others. But definitely veganic, growing veganically is the way to go. Um, so that's, that's all I can say. I mean, it's just, you know, but then again, also you have to worry about the legal laws, the human laws, uh, visa requirements, all these things, passports and all this crap that I, I couldn't care less about, but unfortunately to live in this world, if we're not, um, we are living out in nature and we haven't, we weren't born in a, in a hospital. We don't have a birth certificate. We don't have any of these things. Yeah, we could get away with certain things, but fortunately I was born in a hospital. I have all these birth certificates and all these things. So what can I say? Tropics is, is the best place to, to grow your, your own food, to be living in, with, in sustainability and with, uh, in a community. Maybe, maybe just join the community for now. There's workway.info, uh, so you can try that out. So all you have to do is pay for your flight, pay for your trip, and they pay, usually they pay uh, for your food, and they pay for uh, your, your sleeping arrangements. So work away, I'm gonna post this right here, but workaway.info. So workaway.info, that is the site you go to to create, um, what do you call it, to create, right, well, first of all, you create a profile there, but then you can join, uh, whatever, a couple or a family or a community. And you just work there basically for about 25 hours and they teach you a lot, uh, whatever, any kind of work, whatever it is, renovations, building, farming, cleaning, helping uh, with their kids, whatever maybe. And you just work 25 hours and the rest of it is paid for usually. 
your food is paid for, your room is paid for, all that stuff. And um, that's about it. So what else can I say? I'm going to get going. Uh, this has been a great uh, session, but uh, I got to get going. But uh, the last question is, what is your zodiac sign? I couldn't care less, but I am a Pisces. But I just couldn't care less. <laughs> I don't really follow follow it. Um, I follow more intuition and spiritual growth and that sort of thing. And uh, connecting with nature and all that stuff. So that's about it. Much love, everyone. Thanks for joining me. And I will see you soon.